Now that the rift with Dagrul has been settled, an unexpected intruder appears. She appeared in this special space, without regard to the rainbow-colored darkness as a matter of course. It was Velgrind, a blue-haired, incredibly beautiful woman who is a symbol of fear to Vildor. I guess it's settled. Now let's talk about the next challenge. Hey, hey, sister. Don't be surprised at all. But Milam has attacked Heaven's Tower. What? Sister, what? The information was explained in a simple manner, which came as a shock to Vildor and the others. Dagril, in particular, was immensely upset. Near Heaven's Tower, there is an underground city where the relatives they left behind are taking refuge. Most of them are women and children who are to be entrusted with the future, and I did not think they would be able to cope with the worst-case scenario, such as an attack on Heaven's Tower. Don't lie to me, Valgrind. Fen was the most surprised. Feldway's operation had never mentioned anything like that. It's true. Belgrin spat out in a troublesome manner. Fen took a dig at him. Why, I thought we agreed not to touch that place. Why did you? We weren't supposed to stay out of it. It's just that we weren't told that we would. It's just that Feldway kept quiet because he didn't want to arouse the suspicion of his friends. I don't know. I don't know what Feldway is thinking. Screw you. Shut up, you idiot. You knew Feldway was going to destroy the sacred tree, didn't you? Then, you could have predicted that Heaven's Tower would be in the way, couldn't you? Fen was not so bummed out when he was told that. Only a handful of people can read that far ahead, but it is just lame to say so. In fact, Valgrind was expecting it. That is why he helped Sowie evacuate the residents of Holy Void Damorgania and protected them. So, for the time being, everyone is safe. The outer wall of Heaven's Tower was against Milam's Drago Nova, so I reinforced it with my Star Barrier and managed to hold it off. Dagril and the others were relieved. Oh my god, you saved us. Yes. Ramur has been a big help to us, so we're very grateful. Vulgrind returns to the topic. They've probably broken down the gate. Here it comes, the great evil. Iverage, the world-destroying dragon. So we were really just bait. The Dagrils guarding Heaven's Tower are gone, so things have been made easier. This was a fact that Fen, who had considered Feldway a friend, had to admit. Thinking that Valgrin might have called him an idiot, Fen asked him. So, why did you do that? Why did you come here to tell us that? Valgrin took a cold glance of Fen who asked the question. Nothing, I don't want anything from you. It's Luminous I want to talk to you about my problems, and your brother too. Vildor became suspicious but was ignored. Valgrin asked. So, as soon as this darkness clears, you will go to the sacred tree. No way. Yes, that's right. Feldway is going to make Milm destroy the sacred tree. He had failed once, but he had not given up. Now that he had succeeded in controlling Milm again, Feldway had no reason to stop. As Valgren had first mentioned as the next challenge, Milm and his team were moving toward their next destination. He really wants to destroy this planet, doesn't he? I'm sure he is. Well, I'll try to stop him. Valgren smiles grimly, knowing that it is difficult. Even if she is weak and sad at this point, things will not get better. Then, all she had to do was to keep on struggling until the end. Velgren had learned this from the battle with Ramiru and the others. So, what are you going to do to Luminous? Vildora asked. Accept refugees. Demogania will be the front line of the Holy Void, and we must evacuate them or they will perish. It was a very reasonable opinion. Everyone agreed, and Dagril and the others thanked her from the bottom of their hearts. The rainbow-colored darkness lifted. The wilderness spread out, and the desert of death stretched out. The land was now transformed into a vast expanse of green. Grass and trees are growing at a tremendous rate, creating fertile soil. The effect of the mysterious fertility wave, Fertile Paradox, was spreading, and in no time at all, a vast forest area as large as the Great Jura Forest had been formed. The problem is the Holy City. Perhaps because of the use of Magicule, even the buildings were buried under the trees. Stone foundations and wooden walls were made of materials containing Magicule. It was impossible not to be affected by Vildora's power. Wait, did I overdo it a little? He thought so, but it was too late. The transformation was even more dramatic than Vildora had intended. It seems that Luminous is going to be angry with him now. In fact, the newly awakened Luminous has a very nice smile on her face. She was approaching Vildora, who was looking at him anxiously. So, Vildora. You're going to explain to me what's going on, aren't you? Luminous asks Vildora with a clear blue streak on her forehead hidden by her beautiful silver hair. She smiles, but her eyes do not smile at all. Vildora felt at once as if he were in a dangerous situation. No, that's impossible. A perfect plan to clear his name. It was supposed to be a perfect plan to save Luminous from the crisis, and to make the territories of Luminous and Dagrul into fertile lands. But he can't help but think that the trend is suspicious. Moreover, Vildora had Valgrind behind it, and it was a very difficult situation. 
Now, Vildor had no choice but to rethink his position. No, no Luminous. Well, let me see, there's a reason deeper than the sea for this. Well, I'd like to explain it to you thoroughly, but I'm too busy. So, we'll talk later. Then, goodbye, he said, and Vildora took to the sky. And then he leaves the land, faster than when he was fighting Dagrul. Damn, he ran away again. Luminous grumbles, but she has no intention of going after Vildor. When she woke up and saw Valgrind, she knew something serious was going on. She had been asleep for less than a short time, but a lot had happened in that time. After glancing at the three Dagrul brothers who looked like they were growing out of a tree, she turned to Valgrind who seemed to know what was going on. So, what's the situation? The world is in danger. Can you do something about it? We have to. Luminous asked, and Valgrind cowered. She regretted that she had not been able to stop Remuru from being obliterated, but it was a dangerous situation to meddle in. If she had made a move there, Valgrind's split body would have been obliterated. The right thing to do was to hide and protect the people of Dagrul. Besides, Remuru would have been able to do something about the Chronosaltation. Valgrind thought that he could do something. Since even she could return, she felt that Remuru would be able to return, too. Valgrin believed in this, although she had no evidence to support it. Therefore, it was time to put Remuru's worries on the back burner, and make the best possible move now. She explained the situation to Luminous. Luminous, who was very bright, immediately understood the situation. I see. In that case, we will accept the refugees. Thank you, said Dagrul. Dagrul is relieved. He is immobilized, but he is still able to communicate. With this, Luminous and Dagrul have made peace. However, the city has been successfully defended, but the outer edge of the city is in a terrible state. Inside the city, trees have overgrown the buildings, and the streets have been cut off. It was thought that it would be extremely difficult to rebuild the site, but there was no way to get any compensation from Dagrul's side. The only victory was to rejoice that they survived. But that was the important thing. As long as you are alive, the rest will take care of itself. Luminous, too, was angry about the damage, but the world crisis was more important now. She quickly changed her mind, saying that she would think about rebuilding the city, after all the difficulties were over. Besides, she had a good idea that Remuru would be happy to cooperate with them. Although Velgrind had told her about Remuru's disappearance, Luminous was not so worried. She had been observing Remuru for a long time and knew him well. That slime is not a ball that can die so easily. So Luminous decided to think about the future without worrying too much. Now then, how are we going to get the people to safety? I'll take care of that. With that, Valgrin connected the other side with the space-time connection. Then, under the guidance of the split body waiting on the other side, the people of the giants began to move one after another. There's no need to panic. Valgrin smiles gently. Her smile is affectionate, but not generous. In fact, a disastrous atmosphere was leaking out of Heaven's Tower. Valgrin feels the space-time creak and frowns. This is not good. There's even a hint of Iverage. If we don't set up a serious defense line, the world could collapse in an instant. It seems that there is still enough time for the world-destroying Dragon Iverage to appear. However, the cryptids that will appear as an advance force are not the same small things that came through the rift in the space-time in the past. From the sense of destruction that she could sense, it seemed certain that each one of them was a threat level higher than that of the disaster class. They were no longer at the stage of being able to resist them by themselves. It seemed that it would be difficult to overcome this crisis without the concerted efforts of champions from all over the world. Vulgren simply decided that it was not necessary to inform the refugees of this fact. The reception of the refugees was led by Lewis. He used his authority as Pope to appeal for peace of mind. By this, great confusion was avoided. The people of the Holy City are now in the same situation as refugees. Many of them have lost their houses, so all of them will take refuge in the cathedral. Since there is a limit to the number of people that could be accepted in one place, they were dispersed to underground shelters and to cathedrals and dormitories in various parts of the sacred mountain, and evacuated one by one. In the meantime, a strategy meeting was held with the participation of the Dagrals who had become big trees. The main members gathered were Valgrind, Luminous and Gunther, Ultima, Shion, and the sons of Dagrul. Adalman, Gadra, Albert, and the four-armed Basar were also present. We should try to stop the cryptids before they fly to other places. Dagrul said, and everyone agreed. We're going to have a hard time because of the unreliable gatekeepers. Luminous is still annoyed by this sarcastic remark. I don't appreciate it. Dagrul had no choice but to bow his head. That's why you've been taking advantage of me. Ultima said. Dagrul was puzzled as to how he should react to this. Anyway, Dagrul was definitely responsible for the confusion. From a third party's point of view, the fight was a complete waste of time. Since the cause of the confusion was attributed to Dagrul's deception, he had no choice but to accept it, even if people complained about it. 
On the other hand, Tur Dragon is very rough. Forget about the details, Luminous. There are no details at all, but from Velgren's point of view, it doesn't matter much whether the city is destroyed or not. Indeed, we are alike in this respect, sister and brother. Luminous thought to herself, but Velgren would be furious when she heard this. Baldora, too, was not going to like it. Regardless, they had to make a decision. As you know, when Iverge comes out, we will have to deal with them. And if we have to do it while defending this planet, it will be difficult to give it our all. Velgren gave this not-so-happy explanation. Those who do not know the threat of Iverage, the world-destroying dragon, still do not seem to understand. Luminous, however, is different. So Vildora is headed for the Sacred Tree. Felwe's goal cannot end with the destruction of the Sacred Tree. He also planned to summon Iverage, the world-destroying dragon, so that he would destroy the planet to initialize everything. So, it was a lie all along. The reasons for destroying the gate, and the reason for destroying the Sacred Tree, all add up to one thing. Felwe has only one goal. To destroy the Sacred Tree. He had no intention to keep his sweet words about the division of the territory from the very beginning. No, it is more correct to say that there was no need to protect it. Once this planet is gone, there will be no more territorial disputes. Recognizing this again, Fen sank into a deep sigh. So, don't get back to those details. He said. Vulgrind again interrupted. Surprisingly, she seemed to be uninterested in Fen's situation. Laughing at this, Luminous summed up the conversation. Aside from Iverage, I will have to deal with the cryptids. But even if we take an army with us, we will only let them die in vain. Basara nodded with a look of willingness to participate. I agree. If we go, we only need the general. No one argued against this opinion. However, there was a serious practical problem. Adalman pointed this out. But, don't we have enough forces? Only 11 of the current members were able to move. Even if we add Lewis and other famous generals, there are 4-5 warrior generals other than Basara and 7 nobles. Vulgren had to be excluded because of her role in the war, and she was not able to commit her full strength to the war. Who would participate in the war is also a problem. The good news was that they were recovering from the fatigue of the previous battle. Under the influence of Vuldor's mysterious wave of fertility, Luminous had fully recovered. That in itself was an impossible miracle, but the rest of the situation was so crazy that everyone was taking it for granted. The atmosphere was such that it would be a loss if they tried to get into it. For this reason, eleven of them were willing to participate. If escape from here would lead to destruction, it would be better to hang on until the end. With such a resolve, all of them were willing to risk their lives. Vulgren nodded in agreement. I explained the situation to Masayuki in Ingratia, and he said that Hinata Sakaguchi is also going to participate. Vulgren was trying to stop Masayuki from joining the race, saying that it was too dangerous. If Rudra had been manifested, it would have been like going to die. I tried hard to persuade him, but it seemed that I could not stop him. Masayuki brought good luck to his friends just by being there. Even if he does not have the strength to fight, he is more useful than anyone else. If Lubelius falls, Ingratia is next. And the western nations will be consumed by the fire of destruction. Masayuki, a good-natured man, could not bear to sit and wait for such a future. For this reason, Hiro's participation was also decided. The core members have been decided, but the problem has not been solved yet. In fact, the problems were still piling up. The members were changed, and the meeting continued.